Hello and welcome back to Lightroom Quick Start Boot Camp. This is the start of the third section. I'll just call it chapter three. We're gonna look at the develop module and in particular in this video, all of the items on the left-hand panel. So let's get started. Let's just dive right into Lightroom and Adobe has done me a little bit of a favor in that they updated, had a pretty major update to Lightroom when I get here to producing chapter three. And there's just a, been a lot of changes here in the develop module, in particular, this masking function. Well, we will definitely get to that in a future video. But today, we're gonna to be looking at all these items in the left-hand panel over here. When we're in the develop module, we have much the same opportunity to control the panels. So for instance, we have the arrow here that can you know, hide the panel. Same thing happens on the right-hand panel, the top element, and then the film strip down here at the bottom with that little arrow way down there at the bottom. You can also hit the tab key to get rid of the main panels, but you're keeping the upper and the lower panel, and then you should be able to hit shift tab, and it gets rid of all of them, and you're just looking at your photograph. Shift tab to return back to the panels view. And then let's take a look here at the navigator. This behaves exactly the same as when you're over there in the library panel. It's just that I find it pretty much more useful here because this is, I spend most of my time in the develop module. And this is where you're really getting detailed into your picture. So when I click in here, we can see the default is to go over to this you know, zoom in photo, and then we can change this. Let's go into say 100%. And then when I click back and forth, the toggle is uh, between the 100% and the, um, and the fit. And then I could also do 50%. And so my click it back and forth is to go 50% to fit, what have you. So it's just an automated process to how it manages and controls that that element there with how it's viewing. And then of course, the same idea here with the navigator, we can scroll this around and move this to different parts of the image. Incidentally, one thing I really want to get across, and we'll cover this when we're talking about some of these items over here as well, but there's a little trick that you can do when you're zoomed in like this. Let's go ahead and zoom into 100 because when I'm editing my pictures, I'm always zoomed in at 100 when I'm doing spot checking. And what we're looking for are either dust spots or just little things, maybe they're not dust, but just some other anomalies in the picture that we just don't want to have. And so if you use the page down keyboard shortcut, take a look at what's happening there in the navigator. It's just bumping you down to the next part in the frame. It's still filling your frame. You're just going down in the image. And this is a great way to make sure that you're analyzing 100% of the image. You're not gonna miss anything when you do this because when you come to the bottom, I have one more tap, it looks like, to grab just a little bit more that we were missing there. And then I hit page down again, and it goes to the next column. And it just keeps going down, 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 and then to the next column again. I really like being able to do that. I love that little trick when I'm trying to do my spot, you know, getting rid of those spots, doing the healing, doing the cloning, whatever it is I want to do. I'll cover that again when I get to those tools, but for now, just a little quick tip for you there. Let's take a look at this next item, these presets. I'll certainly admit, I am not a big, huge preset user, but these can be really valuable. So when you're going into these presets, what can really be awesome is just the fact that it gives you literally a preview of what the preset will do to your image when you click that button. So if you, if I were to like this one, let's say, I just click the button to make it happen. Now, since I am on a collection for my website, I'm creating a gallery website that will offer prints for sale and such. And I'm in that collection. I don't want to really mess up this image. So I'm going to go ahead and create a virtual copy first, and then we'll go to town with it and we'll start to be able to uh, look at these things. So I can do that as a preset. Now on this one, you know, the sky is just way blown out and I can then come over here for instance, the whites, I'll then modify the preset. So it's no longer based off of that preset, but it's much better according to this photo. So presets are just an idea. Let's get you in the ballpark. Let's get some maybe creative juices flowing. I actually really like this processing. This is actually really cool. And I might go ahead and tweak it just a little bit more, but this might be again where I would be interested in saying, hey, let's look at some options. Let's see what else we can work on these ideas of presets 
But this is where the next item is going to come really in handy, and that is these snapshots. You can see I have no snapshots on this particular piece here. The snapshots are going to take a time in history as it relates to all of your settings and all of your everything you got going on in your image, and it's going to bake them in, and it's going to allow you to go back and forth really quickly without having to worry about what shows up in the history panel. So you can see here in the history panel for this particular copy of the image, okay, I've got, it was created, it was inheriting all of those settings from before, but we don't inherit the history from before. I then hit the preset TR01, I then made it a whites adjustment, that's all it is. So let's go ahead and make a snapshot here, and I could name this snapshot, or just leave it with the date like it had it there. I would probably prefer to name it myself rather than just the date, but the date can be very convenient too. And so then I can go back to my presets and let's take a look at some of the black and white styles. So, oh, that, you know, that little uh, kind of a sepia tone is pretty cool. Stronger sepia tone, a really moody greenish tone. That could be pretty cool. And then I can come in here and I can inspect exactly, you know, what kind of, what kind of uh, color grading is applied, if any. So it looks like we have something on the highlights here. So we're taking it a little warm on the highlights and that seems to be it there. I, I still feel like I'm getting a, a distinct green tone. And so I wonder, I have to look here in the tint, that's still pretty high. I wouldn't suggest that's coming from there. Other places we have for our color is down here in the calibration. And I don't see anything being swung either way there. So it's interesting how whatever we're doing here with... Ah, here it is, the global. Uh, I was looking at the highlights, but the global element. Here we have a green tone coming through, so I found it. So it's just setting these things, and it's just setting you up for, again, these, these ideas of a starting point, I would say. If I didn't like that green and I wanted to go something more cooler like this... Excellent. I'm ready to go. And when I want to save that, I'm looking at, again, I'm looking at quickly going through the options. Now, certainly I could make a virtual copy and do this to all different virtual copies, but we don't need to do that because I can go snap two here. And then you can see I can just switch between these two different snapshots on the exact same image, the exact same, well, virtual copy of the image. All right, so we've also then seen the history. Let's take a look really quickly at this. This is the main image here. And then we can see all of the history. I've got a spot removal going on, update spot removal. So many things are tracked in the history. So you can see every little change that was made to this image to make it what it is today. And then we have our collections. Now I find this interesting that we're able to have our collections here, but we don't have our folders and whatnots. If you wanna change folders, you gotta go back to the library module and select a different folder. But if you're working in collections, then you have the collections fully accessible here. And I just find that to be an interesting idea. Adobe, I think, is they're wanting to make it convenient for us for sure, but I think this is also a subtle way of saying, use your collections do something with collections, make it that you mostly use your collections to categorize and, and find your images. I do them in folders myself, but certainly as you can see here, I do have quite a few collections coming through as well. It's just that that's not my primary method of just managing my images and going through and, and categorizing the images the way that I want them to be categorized. They are for projects. They are for special uses kind of a thing, not my everyday kind of, this is where I jump to every single time. All right. And finally, I'm going to take a look at here, this copy and paste buttons. It kind of seems odd, but that we would copy and paste what? What are we talking about here? Well, let's go ahead and click on this image. And we're gonna take a look here now. We're gonna hit copy and it'll bring up this copy settings. What do we want to copy? Are we going to bring in the masks from this and put them on the other? Are we not going to do that? Bring in the crop information. So these types of things I like to leave alone and not synchronize from image to image. It's very, highly similar 
to the synchronization function that we'll be looking at in a future video as well. It's just this is kind of a one-off idea. So what we only have the one image selected. We hit copy. I can then come back over to this image here, let's say, and I can paste it. And then instantly those settings are pasted onto this image. Now, of course, if I wanted to, I could come back up here and I could say, hey, that's snap three. And then I've got these three different snapshots of different processing settings that I can utilize from, you know, from option to option and just be able to review that really quickly. So one thing I want to look at, let's take a look at something here as it relates to going back to the original image. And I find this interesting. See, when I, when I go to this other image and I look at my snapshots, nothing is really surprising me there. There's something that's unique to those items, right? Unique to those images. When I come to this virtual copy and then I go to the original of that virtual copy, those snapshots are still available. I find that interesting. I would have expected that to not be available because that's supposed to be a separate rendition, a separate entity of that image, right? And so what I probably should do is go ahead and create one here that says original snap or some such so that I don't forget. I don't have something that messes me up because if I were to click on that snapshot and then I don't have, you know, I guess I have it back here in my history. I can click back in the history. I just don't want to mess things up. <laughs> That's, I'm just getting nervous. I don't want to mess things up with that. So what I really wanted to check was, does the snapshots also bring in and does it remember, I should say, the different ideas on what we're doing with the, um, with the masks? So let me go back to original snap on that. In fact, I'm going to come back to this one on this image. And then I'll go over to the virtual copy so I won't mess up my original image anymore, hopefully. And as we take a look at this, all those masks are there, regardless of what snapshot we have. Now let's go ahead and just take this particular mask off. And you can see it took off the idea we're no longer highlighted on a snapshot. So if I go back to snapshot three, you can see it adds that mask back in. So even that information is in cased there. It's included in that snapshot. It's not just these items that are over here in the develop module and all these other things that are here and easy to access, but it's also these tools, these mask tools that you have. And so that's kind of a nice thing. It just includes everything about that image. And I just wanted to make sure we were all clear on exactly how that snapshot behaves and what it includes. And it looks like it includes pretty much everything, which is great. All right, that does it for this video. We're going to continue on in the next video by taking a look at some of those items in the left-hand panel. So stay tuned for that. Until then, happy shooting.